Welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Certified Financial Planner Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth LLC. In this podcast, we help individuals and couples plan for a peaceful and enjoyable retirement. Join us on this journey where we explore the importance of simplifying the retirement planning process as Stephen, with his years of experience and expertise in retirement income planning, along with guest experts, will help you achieve first wisdom, then wealth. And don't forget to check out the Simplify Your Retirement online course and other great resources at SimplifyYourRetirement.com. Now, on to the show. Hello, and welcome to Simplify Your Retirement with Stephen Strickland from Wise Wealth. Hey, Stephen, I'm excited about today's episode, especially some TLAs. Yes, exactly. Well, it's funny that you say that. I was thinking about the same thing this morning. <laughs> when we were talking about three-letter acronyms. Uh, that's what TLAs are in our industry, in the financial world. There seems to be a lot of these, and uh, they're confusing to uh, the people who do this for a living, let alone uh, the people out there listening to the podcast and down the street. So a lot of three-letter acronyms, and we're going to cover a couple more of these today. Absolutely. So... Uh, you know, I know we had a great guest on last time, Evan, uh, episode three. So if you're just joining us here, you want to go back and listen to that as that kind of tease up what we're talking about today and uh, on the next podcast as well. But what we want to do is make sure that people understand what the TLAs are we're talking about. So I think about there's really three TLAs mm-hmm. that we're going to touch on today. And so I'm just going to give them to you and let you explain what they are mm-hmm. so we all have the same level of understanding here. So the first TLA is an IRA. Yes. What's an IRA? Right. Um, well, I'm glad you uh, brought this up here. I, I can probably guess what the other two are going to be And uh, now that you brought up IRAs. And this is interesting because Paul and I did not talk about uh, – the three-letter acronyms before the show today, but uh, I'm definitely prepared and ready to talk about these things. Um, I do want to make sure everybody does understand if you're joining the podcast for the very first time, uh, we are in season three. And in season three, the, the focus of our season is on the mission of Wise Wealth. The mission of Wise Wealth is to guide investors on the path to financial significance where they are free to give and to serve and to enjoy life like never before. And so we talked about that in you know episodes one and two, and then we, we're going to dig into each of these three areas, giving and serving and enjoying life. And we mentioned that in the area of, uh, in each one of these areas, in the area of giving, we're going to have a professional on. We had him on last week, like you said, in uh, episode three, Evan Lang, talking about donor advised funds, uh, talking about different ways to give. And then in episodes four and five, uh, which we're on episode four, number two, we're going to have some of our clients come on and tell their uh, stories about giving. And we mm-hmm. have uh, Bob and Charlene, or some of our clients that are involved in charitable giving. And Bob is in the studio with us today. Bob, thanks for being here. Yeah, welcome. Glad to be here. And uh, I'm going to ask Bob a few questions here later on in the podcast about you know, his experience with giving. But one of the things we want to talk about today is qualified charitable distributions Mm -hmm. and relates to IRAs, which is what you brought up just a second ago. So in the world of uh, IRAs, there's something that a lot of people are not familiar with. One of the advantages of an IRA is that the money grows tax deferred and the government gives people this benefit of tax deferred growth. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't have to pay any taxes on any of the earnings, but there comes a day Bob, (laughs) as you well know, there comes a day when someone, when the government finally says, you know what, enough of this. I mean, you can't continue to let this money grow tax deferred forever. We want you to start taking money out of that IRA. And and they don't want you to take money out of the IRA just so you can enjoy it and spend it. They want you to take money out of that IRA because you owe taxes. And they're looking at everyone's lifetime, you know, what their um, expected lifetime is. And they're saying by the time someone's, you know, lives their full life expectancy, we want this money out of the IRA. We need you to start paying taxes. And so another three letter acronym acronym is RMD. So the three we're going to talk about today is IRA, required minimum distributions, RMDs, and QCDs, qualified charitable distributions, and how these all relate. So when someone turns 70 and a half, uh, they're required to take minimum distributions. They actually changed the rule to 72, uh, but the qualified charitable distribution rule is still 70 and a half. Okay, and so what that means is when someone turns 70 and a half, a lot of you listening into the audience may or may not be aware of this, but the government's going to say, you know, based on the full value of all of your IRAs 
any of your 401ks. They're going to look at the balance each year and they're going to look at your life expectancy and they're going to say, you are required to take X amount of your IRAs this year. And they'll tell you what that amount is. You don't have to guess. You don't have to wonder. They're going to tell you what the amount is. What's required for the individual is to make sure they take that money out, pay the tax on it, and then they can do whatever they want with the leftover. Some people are planning on this. Some people, part of their financial plan is, I'm going to live off of the required minimum distributions. I have an income need. I'm going to use that, pay the tax, and so forth. But some people don't. Uh, some people get to retirement age and they have they have enough other income sources um, where their either pensions or their social security or other investments are more than enough income to cover their needs. And then all of a sudden they're required to take even more money out they don't want and they don't need. Uh, and they wish they didn't have to take uh, just to pay taxes on it. And that's where qualified charitable distributions comes in. So what a qualified charitable distribution allows someone to do is to take that required minimum distribution and give that money directly to a charity. If that money is given directly to a charity, there is no tax on the distribution. So in other words, it, it, it takes a, a taxable event and it makes it a tax-free event. Instead of receiving the money and paying the tax, you give the money directly to a charity. And there, there are certain ways, of course, this has to happen. It's like a direct rollover. When you move money from a 401k to an IRA, the money has to go directly from the employer-sponsored plan to the IRA in order for it to be tax-free. The same thing here. The money has to go directly from the charity directly to, or sorry, directly from the IRA directly to the charity. It can't go to you as the beneficiary first. It has to go directly to the charity. And then the other thing is, of course, what is a charity? Okay, this does not mean our, our kids who need help. This does not mean our grandkids who you know need to, to go to summer camp. You know, this is actually 501c3s. It has to be a nonprofit organization. So, in order to qualify as a uh, qualified charitable distribution, the money has to come from an IRA. It has to be given directly to a 501c3 nonprofit organization. And so we're talking about giving in this season. We're talking about giving in this episode. And one of the ways people can do that is through qualified charitable distributions. And uh, so let me, I'll, I'll give you an example. Then I'm going to talk to Bob here about some of his uh, experiences with qualified charitable distributions. But let's just say that somebody has $50,000 in the bank and they also have a $5,000 required minimum distribution. The IRS says you have to take 5,000 of your IRA this year. An individual wanted to give $5,000 to charity. So he has two options. One option is to take 5,000 from the checking account and write a check, or they could take it from the IRA. If they give the money from their checking account, they're more than likely not gonna get a deduction for that. There was a time when people used to be able to get a deduction for their charitable donations, but since they raised the standard exemption to about $25,000 from married filing jointly, it's very difficult for people to get a deduction anymore unless they're itemizing. So for people who cannot itemize, the best advantage to you from a tax standpoint is not to give to the charity directly from your checking account or savings account, it is to take it from, <clears throat> excuse me, from your IRA. So in this case, that person could request that that required minimum distribution be paid directly to the charity. It satisfies that individual's intent to give to that charity and it eliminates any income tax uh, that you would have gotten on the distribution from the IRA, and it allows you not to have to worry about trying to get a deduction later. So I wanna emphasize two things to everyone listening to the show today, and that is qualified charitable distributions are good for two situations. People that are involved in two things. Number one, someone who has an RMD, a required minimum distribution that they don't need or want, in full or part, that's one. The other one is they're already charitably minded or they have charitable intentions. You're already giving. If you're someone who's already been giving, you're over 70 and a half, this might be a tool that uh, that you could use. And so uh, I mentioned a second ago, Bob and Charlene are clients of ours and, and they take advantage 
of qualified charitable distributions uh, from their IRAs each year. And so, Bob, I want to ask you this morning, why do you, why do you and Charlene take advantage of qualified charitable distributions? What got you interested in this? Okay, well, thank you, Steve. Stephen, and uh, yeah, Charlene and I, <clears throat> excuse me, actually have always uh, contributed primarily uh, the number one contribution that we've always made is is to our church mm-hmm. but we have a couple of other organizations that we also contribute to now and, right. we, and we have for a long time uh so when as you mentioned the standard deduction went away for most of right. us anyway then we were left with a charitable contribution that was not tax deductible mm-hmm. however we saw this direct contribution from our rmd mm-hmm. and uh it was a it was the way to go it was kind of a no-brainer because we're going to make the contribution anyway Mm -hmm. but at this point with that a qualified distribution to Mm -hmm. the to the charity there was no tax involved and so it just goes directly from the uh, rmd to Mm -hmm. the organization that we would have contributed to anyway so it it really was a win-win as right. far as we were concerned. And for you guys, uh, when you looked at the required minimum distribution, were you you weren't needing that money necessarily to live on or to use or uh, for any other purposes, or you have enough income outside of the required minimum? Well, actually, we are of the mindset to make contributions, and mm-hmm. we always have through our married life. So right. that part, whether we needed the income or not, we had already <clears throat> been accustomed Committed to, to living outside that contribution Interesting. and so uh, sure we could take the money and you know <laughs> nobody ever has too much right. but it's just a mindset that you have right. and for us it works well that's interesting because you mentioned a second ago that you know one of the two key criteria is you have to be over 70 and a half and the other one is you have to have charitable intent you have to be charitably minded and for you all you looked at it and you said okay um, maybe we can you know do well with our other income that we have coming in we don't have to give from that. We already want to give, so let's take the RMDs and do the giving from there. Right. It makes sense from a practical standpoint. It makes sense certainly from a tax standpoint. Right. And so um, instead of you know, so you did. You don't have to do your regular giving through your regular income. You can do your giving now through the RMD, through the qualified charitable distribution. Well, coming through your regular income. That's, as you said, after tax. Right. So it's always going to be after tax unless yes. you do it this way. So if you're making the contribution yep. anyway, why not yep. do it uh, you know, with, yep. without the tax coming out? And you mentioned something important, and that is, I mean, you don't give to just one charity. Uh, you give to several different charities Correct. through qualified charitable distributions. I think that's important for people to know. Sometimes we think, okay, I have to give a, if I want to do a qualified charitable distribution with my RMD, I have to take it and give it to one charity. No. That is not the case. No. You can give it to multiple ones. Correct. Um, as long as they're, as you said, the that's right. one, three C. A nonprofit. Mm-hmm. I know you've been involved in, in doing that. So an example might be, uh, you know, also too, you know, someone doesn't have to give their entire required minimum distribution. It's not all or nothing. So if someone has a required minimum distribution, just as an example, they're required to take out $20,000 a year as a minimum distribution. They may need to live on a thousand of that per month. They need 12,000 of it to them. They could turn around and give the other 8,000 to charity. Correct. So on a $20,000 required minimum distribution, you could pay tax on the 12 because you keep it, you can give away the eight. So again, I wanna make sure people understand it doesn't have to be all or nothing. Um, the port, the part that goes to charity, there is no tax. You can give away the entire twenty and not pay tax on any of that. So you know, as far as you and Charlene, and, you know, how has the experience been so far mechanically? Is, has it been simple? Has it been easy to be able to get the money from the IRA directly to the charity? What is your experience with that? It's been very easy. We just okay. communicate with our representative here mm-hmm. at Rise Wealth mm-hmm. and uh, indicate. You know, if we want to do it monthly, we could do it yep. monthly. We have chosen to do it quarterly. Okay. And uh, so we have those set up as quarterly distributions, and they they go directly from the fund, the invested mm-hmm. fund, to the charitable organization. Yeah. We All we do is, is get a copy yeah. of that transaction. So, as you said before, yeah. it does not come to us, and right. then we write a separate check. It you never see go, the money. No, yeah. it has to go directly to that organization. And then at the end of the year, 
that organization gives you a support letter that they receive okay. directly. So you still get that letter from them? Correct. Saying they've received that, okay. And so it is tied back to you. So in other words, even though it came from your IRA, the check, let's say, is written from Charles Schwab directly to that charity on your behalf. The charity still recognizes that it came from your IRA. Right. Okay, Correct. good. Yes. That's great. And so you'll just either give verbal instructions or written instructions, say, hey, I want X amount to go to this charity, X amount to go to that charity. That's how you've done it? That's right. Okay. Uh, very good. And I do want to mention also, because we talked to Evan Langpole a few uh, last week in the last episode about donor-advised funds. Mm -hmm. And in fact, our next episode is going to be about donor-advised funds. And a donor-advised fund we talked about is a charity that you can give to and get a deduction for and then later give out the proceeds. I want to make sure everybody understands in this context, a qualified charitable distribution donation cannot go to a donor advised fund. It's one of those things. So it has to go directly to a charity so that the charity can use it that year. Uh, so in this case, you cannot give to a donor advised fund through a qualified charitable distribution and get the, uh, the tax benefit for that. Um, Bobby, you, you mentioned you give to several different charities. I'm interested in uh, maybe if you want to tell us about any one of those charities that you are that you give to, you know, what you're involved in, why you give to them, and, you know, what, the, what one of their missions is. I know you're involved in uh, several different charities. Right. Uh, we have three primarily that we contribute to, and one is our, our church, mm -hmm. and another one is an organization that uh, works with our daughter. We have a daughter with special needs, mm -hmm. and so we contribute to that. The other, the third one that I wanted to kind of highlight to you mm -hmm. today, and I was hoping you would ask this question, is actually through a program called Casey Scholars, mm. and some of your listeners may have heard of right. that. But for they have a program that you make a contribution, and actually it's through the Kaufman Foundation, okay. and they meet your contribution three to one. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever contribution you make there, then they multiply that times three and then it provides a scholarship and that is uh, set up we have our set up on a five-year program you can do it all at one time interesting um, and then you uh, make your contribution Kaufman Foundation matches that in that percentage and then they go through the local high schools and identify students of need mm -hmm. and it has worked it's a wonderful program, it really is. I appreciate you sharing that. Uh, actually, I didn't realize that's one of the ones you give to. So KC Scholars, I'm glad you brought that up. Mm -hmm. You said there's a three to one matching uh, grant in there. And so then, um, you, so you make the donation directly to the Kaufman Foundation for the purpose of this, you know, Casey Scholars. Casey Scholars. Casey Scholars. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to basically provide a scholarship for high school students around Kansas City. That's correct. awesome. That's correct. That's a great one. That's right. Paul, I know you have an experience with this a little bit here recently with a, uh, through a grant or through a donor advice <laughs> fund, kind of. I just maybe realized that for, for your daughter. Yeah, so my daughter was one who benefited from a similar type scholarship. Mm -hmm. And True. actually, she has uh, she has some friends that she knows through the high school here mm -hmm. that have had that have benefited from the Casey Scholars. Sure, yeah, I don't know. We, yeah, we know some of them as yeah. well. So that's well, a great way. Our first uh, student happened to be a a dreamer. Okay. They referred to as a dreamer. And yeah, that mm -hmm. young lady was so excited. She was oh, wow. so uh -huh. excited and thankful for the program, and she has graduated a year ago now. And has Amazing. started her on her way to a physician assistant is where she's headed. So well, that's, that's interesting. Great. So you Success know, story. yeah, awesome. So you know, you know who the grant ends up going to? Yes. You find that out and you're able to, that's really great. Yeah, wow, occasionally exactly. once or twice a year, they have a program, they bring the, the donors yeah. together with the recipients and their families. Yeah. So it's, it's a very personal. That is awesome. It really is. I appreciate that. Um, and, and Bob mentioned something else a second ago, and that is sometimes he gives uh, you, he can set it up to where the gifts go out quarterly Correct. or the grants, you know what I mean, from his you know, IRA. So he doesn't. He can do it all at once. He can do it quarterly. You can set it up monthly. Uh, Bob mentioned you know, giving to his church, and some people give to their church you know, weekly, monthly. So you can set it up pretty much to be paid out however you want to pay that out. Right. The main thing is, obviously, when we're talking about required minimum distributions, that the whole minimum distribution does get distributed somehow, some way Correct. during the course of that year to avoid a major tax penalty. Um, so obviously the entire goal of being free to give and, and, and Bob and uh, Charlene have done a great job of managing their 
lifestyle and, and, and he fits really the types of clients that uh, we love to work with at Wise Wealth, people that you know don't have to work to be able to you know meet their income needs. They, they do it because they want to, uh, but they, they, they got themselves to a place of financial freedom, but a place of financial freedom not to where they are not involved or not engaged in society and the world. In fact, uh, they're giving back even more. I know, Bob, that you volunteer, you know, at your church. This is this mm-hmm. is a show about giving, not about serving, but uh, it, it seems to go together. I think people that are involved in giving are also involved in serving. Mm-hmm. You give away your time in, in various organizations and uh, and just, so it's not just about giving money, it's giving time. Sure, correct. So, as far as the church is concerned, I, right? I do. Uh, right now I'm working as the financial secretary there. They mm-hmm. have, a need the the fellow that was doing that unfortunately passed away with yeah. cancer very unexpected and very short time once mm-hmm. he received the diagnosis so i i stepped in in a temporary situation yep. i'm not planning to continue right. <laughs> uh, but yep. uh, i was glad to help out there yep. so that's one thing i love hearing those stories i mean uh, and we hear the story a lot from a lot of our clients paul that they are they're at a place in their life where they are free um, and they're free to give. They're free to, they have enough, you know, they, they prepared financially so they're able to give away required minimum distributions or give away these things, make a difference in this dreamer's life. And you can hear in Bob's voice uh, when he talks about the end result, talking about the mm-hmm. Casey Scholar Program and talking about being able to give to this person and they're able to graduate from college and, and see this happen. And that's what we talk about with giving. It's really about the joy of doing it. Uh, we know that uh, you're, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. We talked about this in our last episode and we can see that with people that do that. That's why we want to encourage people to be generous. Mm -hmm. Uh, We know what it does for the end charity. We know what it does for the the end result, for the people that you're giving to, the organizations that need our help, but also what it does for the person who's doing the giving. And we know that Bob and Charlene are always excited to be able to do this each and every year to give out of these accounts and do this. And a mechanism for doing it that we want people to understand is through qualified charitable distributions and, and, and making sure people understand you know, how it works, when it works, and uh, the joy of doing that. Bob, anything else you want to share about this no, subject? Um, it, it works for us, and it's just kind of, like I said in the beginning, it's just been a part of our lifestyle from the beginning as far as our married life. And so it was yeah. just kind of a alternate way to continue right. our contribution since we couldn't make yeah. the uh, tax deduction, right. but then they, they have this, so exactly. why not? And uh, those organizations definitely can use those funds and, and Absolutely. we're involved with them other than financially. Yeah. So, And I think that's the key. Like you said, I mean, you're already charitably minded, you have a charitable intention. Since that is the case, then I think it's wise to figure out what's the most tax efficient way to do this. Mm-hmm. None of us are doing our giving because of, we get a tax benefit per se, but we do it, to, you know, to to bless other people, mm-hmm. and in turn be a blessing. But if you're going to do it anyway, you might as well get the biggest tax benefit. Correct. Just the same thing with saving for retirement. If you're going to save for retirement, you might as well do it in the most tax efficient way to do that. That Absolutely. just makes wise sense to do that. And so, Absolutely. the purpose of our show today is to introduce the subject of qualified charitable distributions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have to have, like Paul mentioned at the start of the show, these three letter acronyms. It has to come from an IRA. You have to be required minimum distribution age RMDs to be able to do the QCDs, Qualified Charitable Distributions. And so obviously if you're at that age um, and you're charitably minded, we certainly would be glad to talk to you here at uh, Wise Wealth. You can just go to wisewealth.com and uh, you know click the contact us link and, uh, and, and put that in the subject line, Qualified Charitable Distributions. We'd be glad to talk to you about that. Yeah. And you know, I, I appreciate Bob and Charlene knowing you over the years. And one thing that you said is you you already were charitably minded, mm-hmm. but if you still didn't plan to continue that into retirement and build it into your retirement plan, mm-hmm. it, maybe you wouldn't be able to continue that if you didn't plan for it ahead of time. And so Correct. You know, I think that's one of the things as we talk to people about giving mm-hmm. is it's not just that they're charitably minded, but they plan mm-hmm. intentionally to do it not just while they're working, but then in retirement too. So we build it in as part of the retirement plan. Absolutely. This continues as part of your as part of your budget, just yeah. like it has been. So. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So yeah, thank you, Bob. Uh, appreciate having you here today sure. and uh, you know, sharing sharing your story. And I know that, that blessed me and it's gonna bless others too. Mm-hmm. And, and and hopefully stir something inside them to be able to say, 
am I doing the most I can with what I have? Right. And so that, that's exciting. And we thank you for being here. Thank you, Stephen, uh, again. And thank you for having Bob on, Absolutely. being able to bring him Bob on. Him. And of course, our last thank you goes to you, the listening audience. We wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for tuning into the Simplify Your Retirement podcast with Stephen Strickland. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, please click the subscribe now button below. This way, when Stephen comes out with a new podcast, it'll show up directly on your listening device. This makes it much easier to share these podcasts with your friends and family. Again, thank you so much for listening today. For everyone at Wise Wealth, this is Paul Brock reminding you that financial peace comes from having a plan. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to the Simplify Your Retirement podcast. Click the subscribe button below to be notified when new episodes become available. The information covered and posted represents the views and opinions of the guest and does not necessarily represent the views or opinions of Wise Wealth LLC or Simplify Your Retirement. The content has been made available for informational and educational purposes only. The content is not intended to be a substitute for professional investing advice. Always seek the advice of a financial advisor or other qualified financial professionals with any questions you may have regarding your investment planning.